Toshiba has a new tablet on the market called the Encore 2 Rite. It's an 8-inch or 10-inch, and we're going to give you a quick tour and show you what it's all about. Stay tuned. Hey everybody, Daniel Rubino here with Windows Central and today we're going to take a quick look at the Toshiba Encore 2 Rite, which is a new tablet that is now available in the US and other places in the world. It was announced at CES, we actually did a lot of coverage of it and it's a pretty cool looking tablet. Now this is an update to the 2014 Encore 2, which was just called that. Now it's called the Rite because it comes with this guy here, a what they're calling their True Pen and it uses Wacom technology for the touchscreen. So this is available through the Microsoft Store. Now, unfortunately, if you live near a uh, physical store, you can't get it there. So I went into them and they say they don't carry Toshiba tablets, but you can order online. And this is the eight inch version, which goes for $349, which comes with, of course, with Microsoft Office 365, as you can see there, which is a pretty good value. There's also a 10 inch version, which just goes for $399. So for 50 bucks more, you get the larger one. I actually wanted the eight inch because if I want to use this as note taking, I actually want something I can kind of carry around with me. And a 10 inch is, you know, for some people, they're really good, but it's in that in-between spot. Um, but we'll give the 8-inch here a go. So let me just show you the box itself and what you get. Um, you know, I like buying my stuff directly through Microsoft because you get, this is called the Signature Edition. So that just means it's pure uh, Windows 8.1, 32-bit with Bing. So it's that extra thing. It doesn't really mean much to you, but uh, it just means the OEMs don't pay for it. But there's no bloatware on this. It is just pure Windows. Although I do expect Toshiba to have their special writing software on here, which is supposed to be pretty unique. But besides that, it's a clean, purely optimized tablet, and you also get great service. Um, and you can see here, they give you the whole signature edition. Uh, Microsoft's presentation here, I think is always really nice. Uh, you get your quick start guide, uh, which is also included. And let's see the device itself here. Now we actually interviewed Toshiba at CES. So if you wanna go watch that on our uh, channel, we can uh, you go to Windows Central and check that out. I'm gonna pull this bag off here and it looks like it's definitely sealed pretty well. Yeah, yeah there we go. Making a mess here, that's for sure. At least they know I definitely did get it. Could have done a little bit better with the bagging here, I suppose, but. Uh, and that's the tablet itself. A pretty nice device in terms of specs. Now let's go over that quickly before I even turn it on here. Uh, we're talking an eight inch, 800 by 1280 IPS LED uh, display. It's got an Atom processor, so that's pretty good for uh, some of you guys. It's a 1.3 gigahertz processor with a boost up to 1.83. Comes with two gigs of RAM, 64 gigs of internal storage. That's a uh, EMM. MMC uh, type uh, adapter and it also has micro SD as an expansion so you can use that as well. Dolby Digital Plus for the music, USB 2.0 and it has some nice cameras too. Looks like it has a 1.2 megapixel front facing camera and on the back here believe it or not it's got an 8 megapixel uh, camera there, autofocus with full HD video, which is kind of a nice touch. So definitely they didn't skip there. Uh, like I said, it weighs 0 0.83 pounds or 376 grams, which isn't too bad. Um, in fact, I have another eight inch here. Um, I believe it's an eight inch. It's the Think, yeah, the ThinkPad 8 Dur. Uh, it definitely could be eight inch. Uh, you can see in terms of size, actually, that the Toshiba is definitely a, a little bit smaller in terms of overall footprint. Uh, for weight, you know, uh, they're pretty evenly, you know, distributed. I really like the ThinkPad A. Uh, typically, it's a little bit more expensive, but uh, this is a very powerful device with a beautiful full HD display. And then, of course, there it is. I'm making a lot of noise over here, but that is uh, Apple's iPad Mini with Retina, and you can kind of see. Let me put that camera out a little bit more so you can see both of them on here. You can see sort of the display size is there. The Windows one has got a bit, uh, a little bit larger display. Uh, basically same orientation though, although this one is a little bit more uh, longer in terms of overall. But uh, they look very similar. Um, well, a little bit different there. Now, although this looks kind of white, uh, Toshiba was actually calling it satin gold, which is kind of an interesting twist. And you can see in the back there, the speakers and everything. Let's go into the box though, before we do any more. And we pull this out, we see we've got 
the battery for the pen. Put that to the side here. And this is the pen itself, which they are calling True Pen. They're, uh, oh, this is actually kind of interesting. This isn't, oh, there we go. Yeah, so it's got a little nub, comes off there. And this is, a. Uh, you can see the tip here. It's meant for very fine writing. This uses a new uh, technology on the display. It's called uh, Active Electrostatic or Active ES. If that sounds too techy for you though, Wacom is just calling it their field technology. And it's supposed to be uh, a lot more accurate, especially when you write from the sides, uh, which these types of devices have a lot of problems with. Usually you're doing this, but this one's supposed to be a lot more accurate for this type of writing and drawing or whatever you're doing. Let's see, we can maybe put the pen in there, to, or sorry, the battery in there to get this going. The, they did spend a lot of time on the pen. And just when I was talking to them, it reminded me very much of uh, basically what Microsoft did with the Surface Pro 3 and the thought that went to that pen. In other words, they wanted something that was weighted equally. And it doesn't really tell you which way the battery goes in there. So a 50-50 shot, that will work. Although I'm probably missing it. I'm sure it's in the instructions. But uh, they want to give you, um, you know, something that felt pretty natural in the hand. And I have to admit, it is evenly distributed. Uh, yeah, battery's back here, but you can still feel some components here. It's definitely a little bit heavier on the top part, but I don't think it's a bad thing, actually, because uh, it'll give you a little bit more freedom here at the bottom. But uh, definitely nice-looking pen here. It looks like you have two buttons, sort of similar like the Surface Pen, and you can erase, I believe, with the, the top here, which should be uh, kind of interesting to try out. Other than that, we have the uh, power plug here, which I can take a look at. So it is, looks like it's using a micro USB type adapter, which if accurate is pretty awesome because it means it's non-proprietary, which is always a good thing. And it looks like a little lanyard probably for the pen as well, which should be pretty good. Um, and then of course you get your AC adapter. So that's all that's in there now. I'm going to boot up the device, turn it on, and we'll come back and give you a quick tour of the operating system. Okay, we're back, and now I have fully loaded up Windows here, Windows 8.1 with Bing. It's a 32-bit operating system. And before I go into anything else, you're probably wondering about what about Windows 10? So Microsoft's policy so far with Windows 10 is that this will get the update and you'll get the full uh, desktop version. So you'll be getting Windows 10. You can actually install it right now if you wanted to. Um, obviously, I'm not doing that, but yes, this can run Windows 10. You'll get the update and you should be good to go. So it should be uh, a pretty Pretty good thing to have. Right now this is Windows 8.1 and you do want to do a bunch of updates when you first get this because there are quite a few. I did a quick check and there's almost a gig of updates. Uh, part of those are Windows. Some though are Toshiba drivers. Uh, some are also for the Intel chipset on board here for the Wi-Fi and the camera and all sorts of stuff. I haven't done those yet because it's going to take quite a while, but um, you'll definitely want to do that. And uh, when it comes to the actual software here, uh, you have about 47 gigs of available space out of 64. And that's actually not too bad. Like I said, there aren't many apps installed here. You get the default Microsoft stuff, and that's pretty much it. Now, Toshiba, like I said, does have their software which you can see right here and it's actually really good you don't want to uninstall these although you could if you really wanted to so i'll go through them real quickly one is true capture so true capture is very much like office lens if you have a windows phone uh, it basically allows you to use the rear camera uh, which is like i said an eight megapixel autofocus and you can uh, take pictures of whiteboards or business cards or you know anything with text and it's going to get rid of the glare it's going to make the whites better and it's going to basically highlight the text so that is very much a productivity tool and it actually seems pretty cool. So I'm, I really like that idea. Like I said, you wouldn't want to get rid of it. Uh, TrueNote is their note-taking application and it is uh, a really unique one. It's sort of like OneNote. I know a lot of people here are OneNote fans and that's cool too. You have that on here. Uh, but this is a... Um, a little app here and you can see you can basically create notebooks on there and it has all different types of uh, backgrounds or they call templates that you can create depending if you want graphs if you want lines across and all that kind of stuff and you have your different tools available as well and then uh, actually you know I forgot to look up what uh, true recorder is but what's cool about the Toshiba apps is they give you um, 
a nice little dialogue when you go to launch them. And so this one says, when you record a meeting, please uh, position the device where it can record the voices of all speakers equally. So this is very cool. So this is obviously going to be, uh, you know, something for meetings where you can take down notes. I'm really liking a lot of these tools on here. Toshiba has done a really nice job of uh, basically putting on utilities that will be very useful to people in an office. So, uh, you know, clearly this is something that you can use as an artist or as a student, but uh, for business people also, it seems uh, adequate, actually more than adequate, sound, seems very useful. I actually want to use this for when I do events and I have to interview people. I'm looking for something besides a notepad because I always forget it myself. And now let's take a look at that pen. So as you can see here, this is a really cool thing Toshiba has done. Um, the pen says it can't fit in the device itself. What it did is it created a little hole here and you have your little clip. And so that is what you do with the pen for storage. Uh, I mean, it's not the most perfect thing, but it's actually a lot better than say the Surface, which doesn't have any solution like that really, except for the uh, the keyboard. Uh, so that is definitely a, kind of a cool thing. Uh, like I said though, you have to sort of worry about the pen cap here, which uh, can go on the back. So I definitely advise you do that. Otherwise you don't want, you don't want to lose that thing. And that's obviously to protect the nub here at the top. And you can even see before, uh, as I mentioned, the feel that's that new Wacom technology on board here. So they got the little sticker. Um, overall though, let's go around the device here. You have your power button up here, volume up and down rocker, micro SD slot. So you can take up to 64 gigs, but you know, you can definitely probably put 128 gigs in there and that works as expansion, which is pretty cool. Uh, going to the top here, you have your headphone jack and your Windows key. So if you probably notice, there's actually no Windows key on the front of this device. Now, uh, if you're familiar with Windows 8.1, you can always just slide here and do that. Uh, but there is actually a physical button to the side and they actually did a pretty good placement of it. To be honest, if I'm using the device like that, I probably could use that with my thumb. So overall, uh, pretty nice. There's your micro USB port and um, that is for the power. So I really like that. No proprietary connector there. Uh, going to the back, like I said, we did this before, but you can see the speakers here in the back. Pretty good speakers, Dolby Digital quality. And other than that, it's a very clean device. Now the um, camera is really good too. So let's see if I can find my, uh, oop, didn't want that one. Let me go to photos. And so, yeah, here's a picture that I did of uh, some text. So <laughs> very good resolution, right? Now this text is actually a little bit bigger. This isn't like book text. It's a little bit bigger. It's from a, um, a pamphlet, but you, you, you can see uh, this is gonna be real ideal for students who need to take photos of notes or paper. Uh, and if you want to do you know, other stuff too, like outdoor shots this is my backyard currently with our nearly three feet of snow. Um, but you can see uh, the, the quality is actually pretty good for a tablet. I'm pretty impressed with it. I haven't really messed around with the front facing camera, but like I said, it's a 1.2 megapixel. Battery life is estimated to be 11 hours, probably a little crazy in the high end. Then again, this is an Atom processor. So if there was going to be uh, one tablet that could do this, it's probably going to be this one. Uh, performance is decent. Uh, like I said, you know, it's Atom. Uh, Windows 8.1 I think runs very well uh, on these types of processors. But uh, I'm very impressed with this device so far. I really like the pen. It just works very well. I guess I could, I should probably demonstrate that a little bit. Um, I know a lot, of, the thing with pens is you guys are really like, people who are into pens on these devices are really into them. It's hard for me to judge. I'm not, a, I'm a terrible writer and I don't draw at all. But uh, this does have of course a palm rejection. So don't worry, you put your hand on here and uh, you can just write on the screen. And let's see, this is a tablet. And their big thing, of course, is the delay between the actual pen when you're writing and how it registers. Uh, to me, it feels pretty good. It's not quite as good as a pen and paper, but it's probably the closest thing out there. I'll have to play around with it a little bit more to see how well I like it. But um, I think overall, as long as you're not writing super fast, it's a... Uh, <laughs> Sorry, I told you I'm pretty bad at drawing. But, um, you know, it's definitely pretty good. It, Like I said, it uses the latest Wacom technology, so I don't think it can get much better than this. Um, and it does respond, of course, to you can draw super thin or you can press down hard and it goes thick. So you get that whole thing going on there. So head to Windows Central for more information. We'll be covering this device over the next few days. And if you have any questions, you can leave us a comment. We'll try to answer them for you. Other than that though, you can go to Microsoft's, um, the Microsoft Store and check it out and order one there. But there you go, tell us what you think. Take care everybody.